So, what do native English speakers really say every day? Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to Smashing English. Before we start this video, be sure to subscribe because we make new videos all the time and I don't want you to miss any. So with that said, let's get on with the video. My name is Laura and I am a native English speaker from the United Kingdom. Over the last few weeks, I have been taking note of some of the words and phrases I use almost every day. Hopefully you can use some of these if you want to sound more like a native English speaker. But I'm a little tired, so I've asked a very talented actor to play me in the following recreations. Enjoy! <sighs> Morning! Hey buddy! How's your week going? How's your week been? What kind of a week have you got this week? What's new with you? I think he did a good job. He looks just like me. So let's talk about some of those phrases, shall we? So these are the ways I normally start a conversation with people, whether that's my friends or my students. I teach English online, so I'm talking to people all the time. So I normally start with morning or afternoon. You don't even really need good in there. A lot of the time I just say morning or afternoon. It's all in the way you say it. So you don't always need good morning or good afternoon. I say hey buddy a lot. I don't know if that feels like something you want to say, but I like buddy. It's gender neutral. It doesn't matter who you're saying it to. Um, probably it's not great for people of authority, maybe not your boss, but it's a friendly term. It makes people feel very appreciated, like they're your friend. So with my friends um, and people I feel very comfortable with, I say buddy. Hey buddy, how are you? Now, depending on when in the week it is, I will say, how's your week? going or how's your week been? So if I'm asking this person on a Wednesday, a Tuesday, a Thursday, sometime in the middle of the week, I will use the continuous. So I'll say, how's your week going? How is your week going? How is that process going? If it is the end of the week, if it's a Friday, a Saturday, a Sunday, I will say, how's your week been? How's your week been? Tell me about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What was that like? If it's a Monday, I will say, what kind of a week have you got this week? I say this phrase a lot. So on a Monday, what kind of a week have you got this week? And what I mean by that is, what things are you going to do this week? Is it a busy work week? Are you going on holiday? Is it a work filled with chores? Tell me about the week ahead. Or if I haven't seen somebody in a while, I will say, what's new with you? This is extremely general. I'm asking about all aspects of their life. What's new with you? Tell me the new things in your life. Catch me up. Now, I'm quite a dramatic person, so I often find myself using very dramatic words. So here are some words and phrases I use when I find something crazy or unbelievable. Take it away, Bez. <gasps> that is mental. I cannot believe it. Stop. Oh, that smells insane. So let's go over some of these, shall we? We have mental, that is mental. I use this for things that are just unbelievable, but I might even use it for food. I don't know. If I try something so nice, I might say, oh, that's mental, that's so good. So for things that are almost beyond belief, I will use mental. And also insane. I use insane in the same way. So, oh, I can't believe she did that. That's insane. So if you're quite a dramatic person like me, maybe you can have this for your vocabulary. If you're not so dramatic, that's okay, we're all different and that's what makes us unique. Now, most of the time I use contractions, like most native speakers, when they are speaking informally, I use contractions. So I say, I'm, your, won't, I always contract things. However, if I really want to exaggerate that something is unbelievable, I will stretch out can't to cannot. If I really want to emphasize something, I will take away the contraction and I will say, I cannot believe it. I cannot. There's a sense of drama when you take away the contractions. It, it, it feels like you really want to make a point. So listen, I am not leaving. 
That's very different to I'm not leaving. It has more drama to it. So if you want to be dramatic, take away the contractions. There's a tip. And finally, we have stop. A simple stop. I can use this if I don't believe somebody. Stop. Stop. Or if I find something really funny. Stop. Stop. You're so funny. So I use stop a lot. It's a it's a good one if you want to use it. Now let's look at some phrasal verbs that always seem to come out of my mouth. Hold on. Can you help me tidy up? I'll wash up, don't worry. I'll sleep on it. Oh, I can't log in. What's my password? Look at this. Watch out for this. Ooh, let's catch up. So first we had hold on, okay? I use this instead of wait. I never say wait. I always say hold on. It means just wait there for a second. So hold on, I just need to do this. Hold on, I'm making a cup of tea. Hold on, I'm talking to somebody. I use hold on all the time. Okay, then we had clean up and wash up. So wash up is about the dishes. So we need to wash up, come on. We can't go to bed yet, we need to wash up. You don't need to complete that. You don't need to say, wash up the dishes. Just wash up on its own. Wash up means clean the dishes, okay? Then clean up is to do with making the room tidy. So, right, I need to clean up this room because there's stuff everywhere. We don't use clean up for like making things clean. So that is just, cleaning. So if I clean the room, I get the polish, the duster, that's clean the room. Clean up or tidy up is making all the things in the right place. So I'm going to take this hairbrush and put it in the drawer. I'm going to make all the surfaces clear. That is tidy up and clean up. It's different to cleaning the room, but I use clean up probably once a day because I like to be clean, okay? I like my house to be tidy, so what? Now, I don't know about you, but I am a procrastinator, okay? I like to think about things the next day. I don't like doing things at the time. I like to just, eh, I'll just delay that. So I use sleep on quite a lot. So I say, hmm, I'm not sure, can I sleep on it? Or I don't want to make that decision now, can I sleep on it? So when you sleep on something, it means let me make that decision tomorrow. I want to have a good sleep. I want my body to digest this information and I will give you a decision tomorrow. So I'll sleep on it. Log in or out of the computer. This is a daily phrasal verb because I'm always logging in, I'm always logging out. So log in means to put your details into a website and access your account. And log out is to leave your account. Look at is such an important phrasal verb. So I use look at all the time. We use look at when you make a choice to put your eyes on something. So I might say, hey, look at this or hey, look at this on my phone. Put your eyes on this, look at this. When you take your eyes and you put it on an object or a person, you are looking at it. It's slightly different to watch because watching implies that you will be doing it for a long period of time. You're going to watch the movement, watch the progress, you're gonna watch as it moves, but look at is just a choice to put your eyes on something. So. I definitely use this every day. Now, this is a phrasal verb I use every day when I am teaching, watch out. So I say, watch out for this mistake. So when I'm teaching somebody and I want to tell them to be aware of something, I will say, oh, watch out for your, your TH. It's a little bit not quite right. So watch out for means be aware of. Just, just put your eyes on that. Just be aware that you are doing that. Watch out for it, okay? Be aware. And of course, catch up. I love to catch up with my friends. I love to have a catch up with my friends. So I might say to someone, ooh, let's have a catch up tonight or come to my house and we'll catch up with a cup of tea. 
Now let's look at the phrases that really show my age. These are very Gen Z phrases and they are very influenced by the USA and internet culture. I can't help it, I am a Gen Z, okay? I was born in 1997, I am on the cusp of Gen Z, Gen Z and millennials, so I'm in that that generation that loves the internet. We always use phrases from TikTok and everything. So these are the phrases I think that have become a part of my vocabulary because of my age. So if you are a similar age to me, maybe you want to adopt these ones. Or even if you're 87, maybe you want to speak like this. I don't mind, whatever you want. That was the best thing I've ever seen in my life, literally. And I was like, what? I just feel like you've got this. Okay, I like to emphasize things. So that was the worst meal I've ever eaten in my life. That was the worst film I've ever seen in my life. That was the best drink I've ever had in my life. That was the most fun I've ever had in my life. This is a common phrase that comes out of my mouth, okay? I like to be dramatic, so what? Literally, I know it's grammatically incorrect because literally means in a literal sense and I don't always use it like that, but I'm sorry, it just comes out, okay? I might say something like, oh, I literally died. <laughs> A lot of people will be angry with me for this one, but I do say like a lot. Um, a lot of people now say like a lot, and I am one of those people. Sorry. <laughs> if you consume a lot of English speaking media, I know you know that like is everywhere. People say, he was like, hi, and she was like, what? And I was like, huh? And it was so like weird that people would just like do that. And I couldn't believe like uh, the look on her face. And she was like so surprised. And it was just like, like everywhere, okay? I'm trying to say it less, but I, whatever. So you will hear like a lot if you listen to native speakers. Going on from this, I say, I feel like a lot. So I will say, I just feel like I want to eat a burger. So I feel like I want to eat a burger or I feel like I need a sleep or I feel like at the weekend I will want to do this. So it's just my way of starting a sentence to talk about my feelings or, or my thoughts or um, my, yeah, my, my vibes at that point. So mm, I feel like I want to watch a really scary movie. That's what I feel like. You've got this is another thing I use in my teaching all the time. It's an encouragement. You've got this. You can do this. You've got this. It means you can do this. You have completely got control of this. You can definitely do this. You've got this. Now this last category, I'm going to call it the miscellaneous category because I use these all the time, but uh, they're a bit random. So enjoy. 100%. I'm pretty sure. How strange. Fair enough. You know what? Well done you. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. Hundred percent. Any version of that is a really common phrase in my life and I use it to confirm. So it's like a way of saying definitely. So, oh, 100% I want pizza tonight. Or should we go to get pizza tomorrow? 100%. Now, if I'm a little bit less sure than 100%, I might say, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we have eggs in the fridge. I'm pretty sure. That's like 80% confident. So I've got 100% or I'm pretty sure. Another thing I use very often is how before an adjective. So I might say, how weird. How strange, how fun, how cool. All I'm doing is taking the question, how fun is that and shortening it. So how cool is that? Take away is that and I say, how cool. You know what? <laughs> I usually say this before I'm going to give a strong opinion, before I'm going to confess something almost. It's it's an opinion that might be a little bit controversial. It might be a bit opposite to what I would usually say, but I'm going to introduce it before I say it. So I might say, you know what? 
I'm going to go to Paris tomorrow. Yeah, I am. You know what? I don't like Harry Potter. Yeah, I don't like it. And finally, we have well done you. Well done you. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a congratulations. So I will say well done you if someone has done a good thing. Well done you. I hope that was useful for you. You do not need to sound exactly like me. I just wanted to give you a bit of a representation of the kinds of words and phrases I use a lot because a lot of my students are very interested in the English that real people use. So. There you go. That is some English that a real person uses. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. If you would like to follow us on Instagram, you can do so there. And if you would like an online English one-to-one -one lesson with me or my partner, Bez, the link for that is down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Ta-ta.